Have you ever wondered how to hit the reset button on your life? Did you know that I used to be dead? I'm not kidding. My soul was dead. I was no different than a zombie. Did you know you're dead? Yes, if you are not saved, the Bible says you are dead. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of laugh, even as others. So the Bible says that if you are unsaved, you are the walking dead. Do you ever wonder, wonder why you feel empty? Why nothing can ever satisfy you? I mean, drugs, money, you know, whatever it is, whatever type of sins you're participating in, how that never fulfills you and makes you feel whole. If you're, it's because you're dead inside. You are dead in trespasses and sins. Your soul is dead. And if you're dead in sins, what's the punishment? Go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, the wages of sin is death, and what is this death? Now it's time to identify what this death actually is. Go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15. Revelation 20 and verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if you are unsaved, if you are lost out there, your punishment, your future is the lake of fire which is also known as hell. Hell is the beginning stage if you die now, and in the future, when Jesus Christ comes, and during the book of Revelation, it will be turned into the lake of fire. Either way, it's burning, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. A very terrible place that you do not want to go. If you die in your sins, you will go to, uh, well, you will go to hell. I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to be empty, and you don't have to go to hell forever. There is a way out. Go to 2 Corinthians 7.10. 1 First time preaching out in the outdoors, not really used to this, so turning my notes every which way. Now, we're not really sure what to do with my hands here. But go to 2 Corinthians 7.10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. So what is this repentance? It is, you must have that godly sorrow over your sins. You must come to the end of yourself and admit that you don't want this life anymore. You must admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you're rotten and wretched. I did. I admitted I was rotten and wretched a long time ago. I came to the end of myself. I realized that there was no way out. There was no way I'm, I was ever going to get there on my own. Be a good, you know, what the, what the motivational speakers call a good person, quote unquote. I wasn't going to get there on my own. And I admitted that and I accepted that. And I got on my knees and I asked the Lord for salvation. I asked him to save me. I was into drugs. I was into all kinds of terrible things. And I finally came to that realization that no matter what I did, it was never going to fulfill me. And there was nothing that, was, that I could do to save myself. And I needed the Lord's help. I needed him to help me. I needed to ask him to save me. Now go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But 
But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God, mani God manifests in the flesh. God, Jesus Christ, came and died a brutal, horrible death for me and for you. The just for the unjust. If you realize this and accept this, now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. This is for the people out there who don't want the, their lost life anymore. The people out there who have come to the end of their self-righteousness, who are finally realizing that they can't get there on their own, that there's nothing they can do. This is for you. If you're someone that's going to sit there in self-righteousness, I guess you could just turn the video off and go about your way on the way to, on the path to destruction and hellfire. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. You say, well, Tim, that sounded kind of mean for a second there. Well, if you're truly humbled and you're truly looking for salvation, it's not really going to matter much of what my attitude is. It's going to matter what the scriptures say now, isn't it? So, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And that is what you must put your, put your faith in, in order to be saved. If you have come to the end of that self-righteousness, if you understand that you are a sinner, you don't want that life anymore, you want to hit that reset button, you want to give it up, you're sick of it, you want something more to fulfill you, that's what you must put your faith in to be saved. That's for you. Jesus Christ died for sinners. And that's how you hit the reset button. Salvation, God's gift. You know, I used to be a rotten, violent uh, drug addict myself. You know, I used to be exactly what you are right now. You know, someone who's coming to the end of their self-righteousness. Uh, for a while there, I was a prideful, violent fool. And yeah, I, I sought drugs, I sought, you know, money, uh, women, whatever I could have that night to fulfill me, you know, parties, whatever. That is what I used to do, and I used to be that way, you know, but then things, things changed. I came to repentance. The Lord humbled me when I got into trouble, and when that happened, I humbled myself before the Lord, and I understood what I was, and I understood the type of path that my life was taking, and I knew that there was nothing I could do about it to turn it around, not in my own strength. So I asked the Lord to save me. I put my faith in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4, the scriptures. And then I, things changed. My life changed. It turned around. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And if you want to hit that reset button, you want a new life, you want to be blessed, you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through his word, you need to do that. You need to humble yourself and accept the fact that you're a sinner. You need to point the finger at yourself and accept what you are. It's not hateful. It's not mean to tell, tell someone the truth. You are a sinner, and I'm telling you to your face. You are on your way to hell. I'm telling you the truth because I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I love you enough to give you the scriptures right here and guide you to what saved me and gave me a new life. What re hit, let me hit the reset button. And you can have that too. And in fact, it's the only thing that's going to have you. All the other religions out there are all the same. They are all the exact same. All they teach is that man can do good and be good and somehow maybe possibly get there on his own terms. This says differently. This says that you are not good, that you are wretched, that you are, you are rotten, you are wretched, you are depraved. And the only way to get to heaven is to put your faith in Jesus Christ, shed blood on the cross for you and your personal sins. This religion, quote unquote, sets itself apart from all the others. This is truth. All the others are just man-made philosophies and garbage and satanic because all they teach is the same lie that Satan taught, that man can be God and do things on his own. That's not what the scriptures say. You need to ask God for help. You need to admit that you're a dog. You need to admit, admit that you can't do it on your own and ask him for his help and for him to save you. That is salvation. And you know, I really do pray that this, that if you're lost out there and you heard this, please don't go to hell. Get saved today before it's too late, because the time is coming. But with that being said, I pray that this uh, message was a blessing to you, and God bless.